Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Uh, friends, uh, this uh, video is for um, those who are looking for HIV content. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some concepts out here uh, which uh, dawned upon me when I was doing a recent segment on prime editing for the investors who watch this channel. So uh, there's a lot of hope and, um, and more tools are now at the disposal for the scientists. So that's the uh, uh, gist of all that I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's get started. Welcome back, friends. Um, I would like to talk to you about some promising new tools that have been developed for editing genes. And uh, that, I think, has got a, a great deal of relevance to HIV therapies that are being developed, uh, especially the ones that are going to come up in the very near future. And some of them may as well have the promise of completely curing HIV. Uh, so uh, bear with me as I just walk you through a little bit of uh, 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 gene editing history very, very briefly so that you can understand the importance of the new developments that I'm talking about. So early uh, gene editing was done uh, done with the uh, zinc finger nuclease uh, and uh, uh, it was a uh, evolved process. And then um, we had uh, the discovery of CRISPR-Cas9 and it became very, very famous uh, because by that time uh, everyone knew what DNA was and what chromosomes were, what genes were. And also people had the understanding that there are certain diseases that are caused due to genetic mutations or genetic abnormalities. And the thought that there could be uh, a natural uh, enzyme which can be used uh, to, um, or a natural molecule that can be used to edit genes, uh, brought about the promise that uh, probably uh, mutations can be corrected, defects can be corrected, and people can become normal again uh, if they are suffering from any uh, genetic defects or genomic defects. And um, uh, at that time, uh, there was a lot of hype for CRISPR-Cas9, but when it started moving from uh, concepts to actual uh, application, uh, it was discovered that um, with a double strain, uh, strand breaks that was being done on DNA using CRISPR-Cas9, uh, there was um, difficulty in the sense that uh, there are some regions of the DNA, if they were edited, they cause cancer. Uh, and also it was found that there were possibilities of off-base edits happening because if the p pattern that uh, the CRISPR-Cas9 is uh, searching for happens to be in more than one place on the DNA, uh, then the wrong edit could take place. So those kind of problems were there. So as a result of which um, CRISPR-Cas9 slowly started uh, becoming uh, much more realistic in terms of expectations uh, from, uh, from the uh, entire uh, community, genomics community. And another thing that was discovered was that CRISPR-Cas9 was a huge molecule and therefore transportation became a problem. So how do you put a huge molecule into a AAV or a lentivirus? Uh, and um, there were other mechanisms like uh, liquid nanoparticles which were used. So the quest was on for uh, um, editor that could probably avoid doing uh, double strand breaks uh, that would be uh, smaller in size and uh, that can be easily transported. And it seemed like a tall order at that time. And then um, from David Liu's lab, we had uh, uh, prime editing and we had base editing, uh, two methodologies. So today I uh, did a video for the uh, investors in our channel uh, on uh, prime editing advances. Uh, so they have made advances in prime editing and created six variations of prime editors. And each one of them is uh, specific for a particular uh, situation. And each one of them is more uh, precise and uh, uh, and is quite small so that the delivery mechanisms can be versatile and uh, it can go to various parts of the body and ed edit various kinds of cells. So that's a very exciting new development. And now, uh, friends, if you just hark back to uh, my videos on EBT 101 uh, from Excision Bio. So what I said out there was they had a modified, uh, 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 modified Cas9 molecule, which was small enough so that they could accommodate two guide RNAs uh, in order to uh, make the cuts on the DNA. Uh, it was still um, double-stranded cuts on the HIV virus, uh, which had assimilated itself into the human DNA. Uh, and uh, they were cutting off the genes uh, that were uh, responsible for the GAG protein production and thereby eliminating HIV uh, from its uh, virulent and destructive form. So 
now that I see the prime editing potential, these seven prime editing uh, uh, tools that have been uh, unveiled by Broad Institute and Harvard, uh, it seems to me that uh, in future, researchers have a great deal of precision in their hand, uh, and uh, they may probably, some of the researchers may, who are doing HIV uh, therapy research may uh, pick up on the prime editing tools, and uh, they may probably come up with really potent uh, uh, therapies that would be easy to administer, that can reach uh, dormant pools like macrophages, dendritic cells, and uh, uh, CD4T cells, and try to uh, eliminate HIV altogether. So a sterilizing cure, in my opinion, becomes much, much more of a reality under these circumstances. However, I must caution that uh, all those um, uh, uh, the therapies will have to go through uh, FDA and FDA may want to look very closely to make sure that uh, there are no germline edits and uh, that's the kind of thing that FDA usually looks for. So um, even though the tools are now available, the very first therapy that attempts to cure HIV using these uh, tools or the very first therapy for any uh, ailment that uses these tools will have to cross that bridge with FDA and once FDA gets the knowledge uh, and comfort level uh, then FDA may be going much faster on uh, other uh, therapies that come using these prime editing tools. So it's an exciting uh, opportunity out ahead and I thought I should bring you this uh, uh, word of optimism and hope because this is really uh, I, in my opinion a game changer. There is also a company called uh, um, Prime uh, Medicine which is uh, floated by the promoters who are doing all these research and uh, I'm expecting that all these technology will end up uh, getting into uh, Prime Medicine and then get licensed to others uh, who may want to use those tools in order to create new therapies. So overall, it's a good news story, and I hope you like this segment. Uh, good things are coming ahead. Thanks, friends. That's all I had to say in this video, and um, I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>